this session about discussion uh, about artificial intelligence in Java. Uh, my name is Zoran Shevarac and I come from the University of Belgrade where I teach software engineering and uh, I also work at the AI research lab. So uh, the main idea of this session is uh, to bring up to the discussion of various aspects of uh, Java technology uh, we will focus on performance issues and uh, how it affects the development of uh, uh, modern artificial intelligence application. As you probably all know or, or you are aware of that uh, artificial intelligence is a big buzz at the moment. Everybody is doing some kind of uh, uh, big data, data science, machine learning, deep learning and things like that. And uh, things started m moving forward like uh, few years ago with deep learning as one of the main uh, driving forces. However, if you take a look uh, at the market, you'll probably notice that there are uh, almost all new developments in open source and research tools developed in other languages, not Java, mainly C++ and Python. Also, there are many Java machine learning libraries also available, like, uh, like Weka, like um, Java machine learning library, like RapidMiner, and many others. Well, uh, the reason for this, uh, in my opinion ex and experience, uh, it seems to be that the existing Java uh, solutions are slower, they are more complex to use, and many of them rely on native libraries, which introduce uh, many uh, compatibility issues and portability issues and make uh, uh, everything uh, much uh, uh, lower uh, development experience. So, uh, in some general opinion, mine, uh, as uh, Java is a little bit falling behind as a development platform for artificial intelligence, and this session is to see uh, what can be done about that. Now, I, I must say that uh, all that I'm going to say today about this topic is purely based on my personal observation and experiences, so I might be wrong. So I kindly ask you that uh, if you have some more information and I'm wrong about something to uh, bring it up to discussion and let me know and to correct me. So when we say AI, it's a pretty broad thing, many, many sub-disciplines. And uh, w uh, currently the hot buzzwords uh, are listed uh, here. Uh, many of them actually represent uh, kind of synonyms but you know, when you do rebranding, you, you can have better chance in selling them. So main uh, topic is uh, machine learning, which as you know, probably provides uh, a ways for s software programs to learn from, from data and improve their performance and solve various uh, problems like uh, putting things into a group or classification or doing prediction or approximating systems uh, and things like that. Uh, then uh, a specific subfield of machine learning is deep learning or and neural networks. Uh, again, deep learning is just a uh, specific type of neural networks which are being developed for the last few years intensively and uh, have m much success in solving problems uh, in computer vision, uh, text analysis, and in p pattern recognition in general. Now, why they become so popular is they uh, introduced the new techniques which help uh, solve some problems related to data preparation. Since, since data preparation is a big problem, uh, for example, uh, you don't have to worry about the different uh, orientation of images and uh, variations uh, in your data set. Another thing that is around is big data, okay? When you want to teach your software to learn from some data. You, you have to gather data and the more data you have, uh, you'll be able to create better models. So there are uh, tools which are luckily at the moment mostly covered by the uh, Java platform. Yes, there is a Hadoop and Spark and uh, the whole ex ecosystem. And all together, you know, there is a term occurring, you call it analytics. So you gather some huge amount of data and you analyze them using machine learning uh, algorithms. So another hot topic is prediction. So you are trying to predict some uh, events uh, either in financing, either on market, uh, the user behavior, uh, and so on. Another buzzword is all these systems are called cognitive applications or cognitive system. The best example is uh, IBM Watson. 
Uh, and one of the very popular latest development are computer vision and image recognition applications. Also, we see uh, speech recognition, which are mainly used for analyzing, uh, 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 for example, support services. Uh, and uh, or, or with that, we also need a natural language uh, understanding. So we recognize the text, and then we want to know the meaning of that, that text. We need to have uh, some kind of processing. Now, uh, the trend for the last two years is providing these services as cloud-based services. So we have many cloud AI providers. Almost all, all, all big names provide uh, some kind of AI services like um, IBM, uh, or Oracle, uh, Microsoft, and Google. And the latest uh, development, uh, trend, development trend is to build those AI assistants. So we when we see that we have all this at the moment, we can clearly see, and that's what everybody says, that AI is the next big thing to happen. And if we want to make Java platform keep up uh, the step with the latest development, we have to make it uh, the number one development platforms for all these things now, because things are already started to happen. Now, as you all seen, uh, the deep learning is one of the main driving forces at the moment, and the most popular framework on the market are implemented in C++, Python, and Lua, and you uh, list them. It's a cafe, uh, Torch, or TensorFlow. Those are all deep learning frameworks. Uh, the reason why they provide uh, better performance is they are all based on using GPUs. Okay, so GPU is the main uh, horse power of the AI, processing uh, large amounts of data very quickly. So for example, some training of some data sets like uh, uh, with the two, two million images may take five days. So if you don't do it on a GPU, it may take more, few more weeks. So I it's a big, big uh, issue. Uh, and all these things are using uh, specific APIs designed for these GPUs like CUDA from NVIDIA or OpenCL uh, for parallel computing. Uh, at the same time, as I already mentioned, the thing with Java, because Java don't have uh, uh, good, good support for the GPU, although there, there are some initiatives for that, it is falling behind in performance. So Java is much slower. There are ways you can put Java in cluster computing, uh, right, and use Spark, but again, you can distribute data, but again, it, it is still slower. Again, then if you use uh, the native libraries, you have problems with portability. And if you want to create, for example, Internet of Things applications, then you have to compile and distribute for each device and each platform that you want to run it. Uh, when you, even if you try to run it with some of these frameworks in Java in combination, it, it is really dependency hell when you try to put all this together. And the only way to do it right is to recompile and install, install all these libraries from source, which is uh, not easy things to do. And on different machines, even if they run the same operating system, but some small differences in libraries, it's really a lot of work. So if you, at the moment, if you want to use uh, GPUs from Java, there are libraries that do that. For example, JCUDA and JOCL. Um, uh, which are based on uh, actually wrappers around native libraries. There is Aparapi, that is pure Java, but which is very slow. And then uh, the thing I learned here at jQuery, that there is a um, uh, lightweight Java gaming library which provides some JOCL bindings. So if uh, Yanis is here, he may give us some more information about that. Or if you don't want to use JP, uh, GPUs, you can use native libraries from Java using GNI, which is, uh, for example, we have wrapper for OpenBless library, which is uh, implementation of uh, fast matrix operations, uh, and uh, we have a Java wrapper for that. Now, uh, as we heard through several sessions here, jQuery using uh, native libraries have uh, their problems with the performance too. Okay, there are. Um, or when you are sending something to a native call, uh, you have to move from Java control memory to native memory. And uh, when you want to send large arrays, what is the case in deep learning, there are always copies. And uh, for large arrays, there is a lot of cache misses. Also, they uh, introduce many problems with uh, performance 
and uh, usability, which I already outlined. Uh, when you want to deal with a large amount of data, there is a problem with GPUs because GPUs have a limited amount of memory and you have to create some tricks so you can partially process uh, uh, the data that is there. So what would be very nice to have on Java in order to have a better development experience for this kind of application is uh, to have vector operations running on multi-core CPUs with speed that is close to GPUs. As we heard uh, to on jQuery, there are already some initiatives for that, and then we, we're going to look in more detail on them later. Then uh, it would be nice to have faster and easier integration with native libraries and GPUs. Also, easier programming models, so we don't have to use uh, these uh, OpenCL or CUDA uh, codes, so just to run, write plain Java and to have uh, support for fast parallelized matrix operations in pure Java. So uh, at the moment, the attempts that are trying to solve this uh, is uh, there is a project Panama, which is improving uh, native calls. So we might have uh, in the near future uh, something that uh, runs uh, really fast with native libraries. And also what I got information from Sven, that they are also working on a support for vector operations. Also that information is at the moment not available publicly, but there is in internal mailing lists. Then there is Project Sumatra, uh, which wants, aims to provide uh, support for GPUs and APUs from Java. But I heard about that project uh, like two years ago on Java 1, but I don't know, does anybody have information what's going on with that? I think Ivan said that is mostly dead. There's no update and no status on this uh, project. Yes, that's what I noticed. It's an interesting thing to hear, but let's see wha why it's it stuck. Then uh, on the first day, there was information that there are ongoing work on a vector API, but I couldn't find on Google anything about that. Anybody knows so where could we get information about the vector API? I think you, you can maybe look at the JVM uh, language submit uh, right now. Yeah, I think they are talking about this also. So maybe look at uh, okay. look at the videos. Yeah, I run slides. run right away after this session <laughs> to catch them. And then the interesting thing that uh, Yaroslav Tulak told me that uh, Graal compiler that they are they are building at the moment at Oracle Labs can be customized to generate. Uh, code and replace parts of the bytecode with CPU or uh, CPU or GPU instructions. So that might be very interesting solution that is available at the moment. But uh, as you you are guessing, it requires a higher level of expertise, and uh, it requires that you know a good data assembly and bytecode. So it's not easier to use. So we still have uh, that problem. So what I uh, Want, wanted to, to show you uh, is uh, some approach that uh, I'm uh, about to try is uh, to uh, create uh, faster matrix operations in pure Java with just buzz I using uh, multi-threading support in Java. So we don't want to move uh, huge arrays and matrices through memory. We don't want expensive JNI calls. Let's start to create uh, smart algorithms that will be help us to build uh, fast multi-threaded matrix operations. So for this example, I choose the uh, I choose the basic class, um, basic matrix class that I will show you, which stores all data in a single array. So why it is that this way? Well, in order to easily support creation of uh, n-dimensional arrays, and because of the it's a more efficient ways because of things that are going on in memory. Now, when you have this kind of class, I'll show it to you in, in, in a moment. So, sorry, just uh, because of the screen switch, I guess NetBeans have to. Is 
happens that they shut it down and start again, sorry. So here's the basic matrix class. We have an uh, array of uh, doubles here, and we have two variables uh, which stands for number of rows and columns in that uh, matrix. So, sorry? Control shift F. Thanks, I have uh, assistant. <laughs> A NetBeans assistant, interactive. So th this is the matrix class. Uh, you see this uh, uh, value stored here. And then I think when you do th something like this, the first thing you're I'm started to worry, okay, wh whether it is going to be efficient because when you're having many and many access, uh, accessing and setting the values of the matrix and you have getter and setter methods, um, sorry, this, these two here, when you want to specify the uh, X and Y index or I and J uh, and to calculate the position in array, whether it is going to be efficient. So in order to be efficient, you have to make sure that these methods are going to be inlined and so that I'm uh, pronounce them final and they have to be lower than 30 bytes, right? That's what the specification on JVM says. So I kind of wanted to um, uh, try that to make sure that th that's w what it is happening. So in order to see that it, it actually works like this, uh, I use this uh, settings so for VM options unlock diagnostic VM options and print inlining so I can print information about inlining. And uh, when I run this, okay. We can see that these get and set operations are getting in line because there are many calls to those operations. So in that way we have solved that performance issue, okay? So, so on one side we have this flexibility, we can create n-dimensional arrays and store them efficiently and have ni nice class with the uh, uh, methods and on the other hand we don't lose performance. So this is the solution that was uh, satisfiable for me. Okay. You they don't be, uh, they don't need to be uh, final to be lined up here. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I just wanted to make sure because there's a story that the virtual methods don't get inlined. So, I, I, somebody says you you have to, they have to be final. Somebody says they don't. So if I, you're saying that if I delete this, right? I mean, if you don't override it. Oh, if I, yes, it's okay. I won't be overriding them. Okay, so here it's you pr you proven to be override for any other uh, class that may inherent uh, extends this. But if you show that your code uh, anyway don't uh, don't inherit and override those methods, finally it's uh, it's uh, not needed. The the JIT is able to to find out that there is no override, so they can just inline, deregularize and inline. Okay, thank you very much for that. One myth busted right now, okay? So method does not have to be final in order to be in line, okay? Because sometimes in, in documentation you find that information. People are saying, you know, on Stack Overflow, things like that. But but I if you want to make sure that somebody else doesn't override method 
and then that method don't get in line, you should put final, right? So, so that's the thing. Now, regarding the multiplication itself, so here is the matrix operation class. It's have a set of static methods. So here is the multiply method, okay? This is a standard school algorithm for matrix multiplication with uh, iterating uh, the rows and the columns of uh, other matrix, multiplying them and summing and creating element by element. So here we are using uh, these getters. And here is that run, run method, okay? This is the, our example, and as you can see, we are creating here matrices with uh, dimension square matrices, uh, 3,000 elements in 3,000 rows and 3,000 columns. We are filling it with the random data and then calling this uh, multiply algorithm. So, yes, this, and it prints out the matrix, so that's it. So, the other way to do this is to I tr that I tried in a multi-threaded manner is here. So this multi-threaded example is using executor service, okay? We are using a thread pool with two threads. We are creating two threads. And the whole idea uh, is to have uh, one thread going through even rows and even columns and the other thread going through odd uh, rows and columns. So at the end, they uh, should multiply the entire matrix. So here is the code of the uh, multi-threaded, of one worker, of one worker thread. So the idea is to provide uh, to that worker thread two matrices that needs to be multiplied. You also provide the result matrix. So t both threads are accessing the result, the result uh, matrix and filling it with data. You provide a start index, okay, which you are from which the thread is going to start, start iterating elements uh, and the step that it is going to do. Now step can be equal to the number of threads. And in this, in this specific case, what we are doing is uh, providing starting from zero index with step two and from one index also with step two. Um, um, I, I don't know if you have the issue right now, but you, you need to make sure that there is no false sharing doing that. Because even if the cells are uh, different for all the threads, you, when they're accessing to the cell, they, they read a, a whole cache line. Okay, so it's, it's 64 bytes usually. So they, they may access all uh, several cells in a in a row, okay, and if multiple threads accessing and writing those cells, uh, it's if it's for reading that's fine. But if you're writing, yeah, 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 you have issues. But uh, uh, since uh, they are accessing odd or even different cells, they are never accessing same cells. That's the thing. It, it can be different cells. It's always different cells. Yes, but if they are on the same cache line. So if they are on the same? Cache line. Cache line, okay. So when, when the, the CPU access uh, cells, it, it, uh, it fetch, in fact, 64 bytes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, it's not one cell each time. It's a bunch of cells. Oh, I see. It's in 64 I bytes. I see. Okay? I see, I see. So you m it's not obvious that yeah. you have this issue. Yeah. So you make sure that okay. that's all the padding and everything that's going okay. on, the content did, for example, uh, annotation that's going on. So yeah. you, you need to make sure because it's very, very, um, yes, volatile you can have a very Volatile could should solve that, right? Pronouncing that uh, field volatile. No, 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 it's not volatile uh, effect. I mean, you can have, you, you can create a class with two fields each thread writing to each of the fields, so they are completely separate fields, but it, they, they, they lie on uh, the same cache line. So you have a ping pong between the two threads and the, on the two cores uh, for, the, for the same cache line. Mm -hmm. And a very bad penalty of this in terms of performance. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much for this. So uh, the next uh, thing uh, to see uh, this how it does, it does the same algorithm, just one going through 
starting index with specified step, and we specified starting index as zero and one, and both threads have step two. So the next thing I did, uh, I run this with uh, JMH. Uh, here it is, okay. This is a JMH test. So some things should be improved that, but it is running and giving a result that we are expecting. This is a benchmark testing with single threaded operation, and this is different benchmark testing the multi-threaded operation. Now, uh, if we run this benchmark, uh, let it run and uh, sorry and this at the end not here we specify the number the dim dimensions of matrices that we want to use so let's say let's say go five I don't know two thousand elements and if we run it okay it will take a while okay. so while it's running we can take a look at the results and we'll just show you uh, what I did. Uh, so, to go so what what we are benchmarking is benchmarking single and multi-threaded ma matrix multiplication with squared matrix of uh, double values, and I have used the different sizes: 100 times 100, 500 times 500. Th thousand by thousand, two thousand by two thousand, and three thousand by three thousand. So uh, the algorithm complexity for ma matrix ma multiplication is n to the power of three. So in first case we have uh, like uh, one, um, or we have a million operations. Uh, in second case we have uh, like uh, five million operations. When we have thousand by thousand we have a billion operations. 2,000 by 2,000, 4 billion operations, and 3,000 by 3,000, we have 9 billion operations. Uh, I use the farm form up iterations. I don't know if that's enough, but kind of look it is. And five measurement iterations. It's being benchmarked on this uh, laptop with Java 1.8 with, with uh, i7 Intel uh, CPU. So here are the results, okay? When we have a matrix of dimensions 100 times 100, w we, uh, the multi-threaded uh, version is actually slower. So the workload is not uh, big enough to justify the additional operations. But um, when we have five, 500 by 500, we can see the speed up. And the same speed up uh, we can see in a further increase of this uh, matrix dimension. So. What we measured is we measured uh, in throughput benchmark mode, uh, which measures the number of times per second a benchmark method uh, could be executed. Huh? Four. Yes, four real cores. F I think four, four real threads, four cores. Take, take the mic, please. Right. Okay. So th there, the one thing is like if you start doing the math in terms of the number of cores that you have, right? It seems like um, um, it seems like the speed ups are uh, not correct. Yes. For, for yes. some reason, it's, it's not possible to to adding one thread and have a speed up that more than two. Right. Absolutely. So that looks like Impossible. what you're measuring is like uh, cache behavior in the in the core. Yes, but uh, I used only two threads, so it perfectly makes sense to have two times speed up. Yes, I didn't but use not four, more but than two. But it's more than two. It's 2.5. It's impossible. Oh, you think so? Right. So there's there's something fundamentally busted inside the micro benchmark. I'm not sure what it is right uh, yeah, now. Yeah, the micro benchmark. But it's flipped. probably somewhat dominated by, what do you say, like ca uh, cache performance, yeah? Oh, no. Oh, it's, I it's see. It's hard to say. Uh, the, uh, the other thing too is like for the type of loop that you're using, you probably want to do something like uh, make sure you turn off things like the uh, guaranteed save point inter no, intervals no, and things. No, no, no. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not the issue. 
but I don't think that's the dominating issue. I think it's probably going to be cash. But there's okay. something in there. No, no, it's it maybe it's in, in the benchmark. And there is something wrong in the okay, benchmark. Here we, we can here review here it offline, maybe. But uh, honestly, 2.5, it's impossible. You can really? do a speed up more <laughs> than two. That's yeah, I was so happy to see that. Mathematically impossible. Here's the benchmark. And I think, I think that even um, this executor service, it shouldn't be created here. But I didn't know. If I put it here, I get some uh, exception from the JMH. I don't want to benchmark the creation of executor service and creating new threads. Mm, that's know. not the issue either. No. Um, yeah, well something here's more, the benchmark. This is something more fundamental. Okay. Can you spot it? Um, because I was very happy when I saw these results. You can get two I times mean, with I mean threads. You don't have to, to create the executor into the benchmarked method when it's makes no sense for me. Yeah, yeah, but um, when I try to put it here, I get some exception from JMH and it won't run at all. It runs once and then I, I, I get some kind of exception. I, I actually think this is measuring cache behavior, right? Um, because the scheduler is going to round rob and the threads around. And if it's a single thread, it's going to probably end up with uh, more cache misbehavior. I think I it's a thing up to the JMH. What, ma what machine are you running, actually? You're running no, Linux? Uh, uh, yes, Linux, Ubuntu Linux. with Ubuntu, yeah. i7, Intel. Mm -hmm. yeah, so no, uh, l let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, let's, yeah, let's take going, this offline yeah. and yeah. we will see your, your okay. benchmark. OK, OK, OK. So what I thank you for um, the my what my conclusion was, okay, which might be wrong, but you haven't convinced me yet, right? But we'll see during the hackathon sessions so we can see. But in general, that maybe not two times, but you can speed up, significant, get a significant speed up uh, with matrix operation on just using page, plain Java with multi cores. Because much of the application that I've tested so far, for example, these benchmarks on N NVIDIA, it says, 24 four times faster than a CPU. But when you download something, it's not probably they've been running on a CPU on a single core because of the internal co configuration of the open bless. Very few people really compile it. Uh, what we have seen that uh, on small matrices, the, this multi-training is much slower. And uh, this definitely needs to be further investigated, and we are going to do this on a jQuery, on a hackathon. I propose actually the hackathon session about this, so we can see all the things that uh, Kirk and Jean Philippe uh, here outline. Uh, what, how much is the speed up? So, would the adding more threads would make things faster? Well, very likely. You can s easily add not two, but uh, four or more threads, which should be roughly corresponds to the number of cores or threads on a CPU. Uh, so the main question that I was trying to answer, can Java on a CPU with a very specialized implementation could uh, beat the GPU? Well, I think it could, so it is a work in progress. And uh, if that could be achieved, I think that it would be a big, big win for Java in the area of uh, AI. Uh, for big data, machine le learning, and scientific computing. So I open discussion if we have anything to say more. And this is a slide just for you. I won't comment at the moment. Um, maybe I missed something here. But you know, you've got your n-dimensional arrays uh, boiled down to a single dimension array. And then you go through the square bracket indexing operations through the uh, inlined setters and getters, but um, there's bounds checking going on every time you do that, right? And and you know, you c can you you can get that you you can turn that off. How does okay? How does that work? The, um, the the JIT is able to eliminate the the bound checking, so it's not an issue.
So, so there's no there's no bounds checking that's going on on in any of the setters or getters. Okay. No, no, it should be. Uh, there is there is no bound checking. The the JIT can emit it. That's that's very trivial um, uh, loop on arrays, and you can eliminate this. Yes, yes, I, I actually planned to do, do JIT watch to see what's going on. Uh, quite Chris is not here this year, I thought he was coming. Uh, yeah, Simon is too bad. I was counting on him, <laughs> but you could help also. <laughs> I see. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah? If yeah? I can make a comment, um, uh, the work you presented, uh, uh, can help actually uh, um, popularize Java in the scientific computing area, I would say in general, not, not, not necessarily artificial intelligence, uh, because uh, only part of AI relies on parallel computation. Um, and I'm not sure if pushing in this direction will make Java more popular within the AI community. Uh, it seems to me that uh, other qualities and characteristics of Java can be more useful to the AI community, uh, not nece necessarily speed. Um, in fact, uh, one of the most popular textbooks used around is the Russell and Norvig book for AI, and there is a Java repository for all the algorithms in the book. Um, uh, that repository, I think, is a little bit behind, so uh, the Java community can actually popularize the language with uh, the community by somehow improving this repository, I would say. Um, I just uh, checked and uh, I think it, it is based on JDK 7, so I'm sure that things can be better in JDK 8 or even 9 in the future. Yeah, uh, yeah. So this way Java can be uh, popular in the AI community, not only uh, for the speed, which is hard to, you know, it's really hard to beat uh, other languages like C, C yeah. for example, in terms yeah. of speed, but you can uh, use other qualities like the hierarchy, the classes, uh, yeah. uh, and all the, the nice features that we know from Java. So uh, if some of you uh, are willing to contribute to that repository. Um, I think it's easy to find it. It's, uh, it's on GitHub. And if you start from the web page of the textbook, it's uh, AI, a modern approach. Uh, the page is hosted at Berkeley. Yeah. Uh, so from there you can find the link to GitHub and maybe you can yeah. be co contributors there. Yeah. And that actually will make Java even more popular within the AI community, beginning from the students, you know, from. Yeah, thank you very much. That's a very good idea. Yeah. I know it's one of the most popular, it's a Bible for the AI of today, so having the temple. And actually Java is, and it was popular in the AI community, many frameworks and applications, but I just get that feel that new things are not going to de develop it, developed on Java, but on other platforms, so this is just a brief overview. Well, I think it's uh, it's uh, ve very easy to use, you know, for, for the people who are used to statistics and things like MATLAB and like that. So it's not for developers, but for Java developers. Me as Java developers, I'm more used to Java, but uh, uh, people are that are not so, you know, that are starting and uh, with the, that are good with statistics, it is very easy to run very specific algorithms. You have m much less coding to do and you can uh, very easily run a very visualization and analysis. So it makes things very faster, you know, for. Well, definitely, well, definitely. But I it's not a small effort to develop or something like this, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Python is also one of the important languages. Uh, Python is really extensively used in that area with this. Uh, 
scikit and numpy that some libraries they're, they're very very easy much less coding much less effort to do this specific kind of task so it would be very helpful to have uh, tools and libraries that could uh, help in that uh, uh, domain yes uh, sorry we did so this. i mean uh, I, I wanted to do an analytics session but it didn't make the cut for whatever reason because um i mean in our opinion um you know the big data for finding customer behavior and all that stuff is like really really interesting and stuff like that but we were interested in actually using analytics for uh, it's not just us there's other groups that are interested in using analytics to to um, be, be able to, to um, uh, discover computer behavior. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, <coughs> you know, th so, so basically, uh, you know, what we're looking at is that you know, we're going to have Java developers that are actually, or uh, JavaScript developers or other people like that that are going to be interested in, I think, in the near future, a lot more interested in describing uh, machine behavior with, uh, with yeah. analytics. Yeah. Um, which means that having, you know, the biggest problem rate, and I mean, the biggest impediment is just uh, tooling that's available for us to actually, you know, to, to, to do experiments very easily. W you mean tooling for Java or tooling for our... Tooling for Java, yeah. yeah so yes, 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 yes. I agree, I agree. So you, you take a look at the Rapid Miner. It's pretty good. It's the, Rapid Miner. Okay. It was open source. I don't know if it's still open source. They switched to commercial licenses, there might be, but it's very good tool. They improved a lot over the few lanes, uh, specialized in prediction, but there are many, many algorithms implemented there uh, with a nice workflow, very easy to use. Cool, this is helpful. If there is no more questions, then that's it. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> and if you want to learn more and try, come to visit uh, our hackathon session on Friday about this. Okay. Great.